Hello, my spicy pack of pickled peppers. How are you today? I am fantastic. I am going to do another river pour. I mixed up two primary element colors, which is very simple to do. That's why I really didn't want to waste time mixing them for you because I could just explain really quick how to do these. So these are mixed with just polypore and the dry paint from primary elements to create your own shimmery luster colors. This one is Irish Mist and the one you just saw was Majestic Blue. Okay, so I wanted to get those out of the way so I don't have a very long video. So now, again, to use the primary element colors, you add as much of this as you want to make paint. So that sounded really wrong. <laughs> Let's say you want to make this amount of paint. You would put this amount of polypore in a cup and then add, let's say this is two ounces. This is one eighth of a teaspoon per ounce. So you would double that, okay? And then you would have a bottle this size. Or you can make the little tiny bits like I did and just put a little tiny bit of the color and it doesn't take much. So that's those. Now, when I use those, I like to have some matte colors that aren't shiny. And for those, I go to my tube paints. Two paints, what are two paints? Golden, Liquitex. I got this new brand and I'm freaking loving it. It's by Holbein. It is a little more expensive, but I just love the quality of this stuff. And then I have the Blick, as you saw, Purple Matter. So I'm going to do the river pour again. And Indiana, I'm sorry, guys. I got a cat in here. I didn't notice he needed to be on his way because he loves to walk by my tripod table and rock the boat. <laughs> All right, so where was I? The two paints. I like to use a flat matte color that makes these shine more and gives your put your eye a place to rest. If you use all shiny colors, it's almost overkill. So for my two paints, I'm using the my base, my river base is going to be in lime green, Liquitex. I'm going to use the turquoise Thalo from Golden. Manganese Blue Nova from Holbein. Purple Matter from Blick. And Iridescent Bright Gold from Liquitex. For my white, I'm going to be using Fluid titanium white. Now, what I want to do is I want to just mix two colors with you so that you can see what the process is. So for, let's do the white, for instance. I'm going to need a cup full of white for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this fluid paint. Now, here's the thing. Normally, you could take your pouring medium. I'm using pouring medium for this because I am using another high quality pouring medium, the polypore, for the other colors. So I kind of want to match my batters, I'll call them. So I'm going to use pouring medium for this one, not Floetrol. So normally, it's a I do 50% paint, 50% Floetrol. For this, I'm going to do twenty five percent paint because this is fluid. I know this is a lot of pouring medium, but that's what it is. So you can see I used 
almost three times the amount of pouring medium. It's expensive to pour like this. I don't do it often. So you mix it up. Now the good thing with the fluid colors is they are pretty much ready to go. The consistency is perfect. Now, if I had been using Floetrol, I would have did the same amount of paint and the same amount of Floetrol that you just saw me use. So, you can see the consistency is pretty much spot on for pouring, okay? Now, the two paints are a little bit different because I'm working with a heavy body color, um, a medium body color, so those are going to be mixed differently. So for these, I'm going to put in that much. So that's uh, three quarters of an ounce of pouring medium two that much paint so a very large piece size maybe two peas put together two peas in pod give it a mix and you're going to see that this is going to be a lot thicker so i'll have to add a few drops of water to this color this color also, because it's going to be my base color for the river pour, is going to be the one that has the silicone in it. Because I'm hoping that with the silicone in this color, once I lay the other colors on top, it's going to push up through them and create my cells. So this one really isn't that much thicker, believe it or not. I may not even add any water to that one. This next one, though, is really going to be a heavy body. And I will show you that now. So the gold, heavy body, gold. It's going to be a little bit thicker. So whether or not you add water is dependent on what your paints feel like after you mix them with the main ingredients the if you use flow trial or pouring medium now i don't need much of this gold so i'm only going to fill this up to there i probably put in too much paint but that's okay i'm going to mix it around now one thing with these heavy body paints to make your life a lot easier. Add a little bit of pouring medium at a time and get it to go into a paste almost and then keep adding it a little bit at a time or else this is gonna happen. See, it's like chunking up on me. So now I'm gonna have to sit here and mess with it. Of course, I'm filming and I don't wanna take as much time on you guys. Um, doing a little pouring medium at a time, as I just said, so I try to get it done quick, but it makes it a lot harder. So just add a little bit at a time and get it to break up slowly. So now this paint you're gonna see is going to be a lot thicker. See how thick that is? So now I'm going to start adding in a couple of drops at a time. And when I say a couple, I mean a couple. Because believe it or not, one drop of water too much can lead to you having to add more paint to add, get it thicker again. And it's then it could be too thick again. And it's just a big pain. So just go slowly. Okay. I know I still need more water in that. Two more drops.
still too thick. You see that consistency? For this, what I'm doing, it's too thick. I need my paints to be able to move around. This here is what I'm looking for. It just disappears right back into the paint. The stream of paint disappears, I should say. So we want to get it really close to the consistency of the others. We want to make sure all of our paints, no matter if it's the primary elements or the two paints, that they are the same consistency. Right, so I need to keep going with this. I'm gonna pause you guys, and as soon as I get it to the right spot, I will be right back. All right, so I finished mixing up my colors and got them where I wanted them. And um, the last thing I need to do is I'm going to add in, and I always do this whether it needs to be done or not. I just like having the security of this stuff and that is GAC 800. It's, um, I don't think it's gonna focus for you. It says low crazy ex extender for pouring acrylic colors. And what that does is it helps to prevent cracking in your painting, also known as crazing. Sometimes some colors or pouring mediums dry faster than other things. Like for example, the polypore could dry quicker than the Liquitex, which I'm not saying it does. I'm just using this for an example. And what happens is it causes the paints to crack sometimes. And I notice this a lot when I use, not the primary elements, but when I use just regular tube paints and I mix one color with pouring medium and then I use Floetrol for another color. It's just how I mixed my colors. I may have had some leftover from another pour that had Floetrol in it. So the pouring medium dries quicker and then the Floetrol colors don't and it causes that cracking. So I just put a couple of drops in this to be safe. And um, yeah, it seems to help a lot. Let's put it that way. So you just get it open here. It's got a little clog, of course. Story of my life. Always an issue. Nothing can be easy, guys. <laughs> Nothing. All right, so. There's a few drops in each color. It's not really any measurement. I just, like I said, I like having that security blanket there. All right, so I'm gonna move those off to the side. I'll mix them as I use them. The only other color I will be altering will be the lime green with the silicone when it's time. But first, I need to draw my center. So I'm gonna get my little mechanical pencil here and I'm going to just sketch out a center. I have my canvas propped up in some areas. I'm hoping that it'll help with the uh, unlevel issue. So I like to always start wider in this area and then just kind of wiggle it along, make some kind of a pathway. It's not really important. You're not going to see it. You're just trying to contain your paints to that area. Okay? Just like so. So now I have my base color that I'm going to mix this GAC 800 into 
and then I'm going to put in four drops of silicone. If you're looking for these products, they are all in my description box. And that may be overkill for the silicone, but I'm not putting it in any of the other colors. So I'm hoping that it will be a perfect blend. All right, so we need to cover this area with our green that we just drew in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Go over the edge a little bit with it. Over here too, just to use it up. So again, the whole per, uh, point of this technique is to have that one striking color Lay underneath the rest of your colors and have it poke through. So I'm going to put that there. Use my finger to just lightly spread this out. Okay, bada bing. So now what I want to do is I want to start slowly incorporating my colors. I'm going to add in the turquoise first. And I'm just going to do little puddles to begin with. We always start out so determined to be proper and precise and then we get a little tired halfway through and start flinging it wherever it can go. Or at least that's how I roll. <laughs> I'm already uh, getting ready to just start throwing it down. I do not have patience when it comes to stuff like this. I saw this video on YouTube about this nine-year-old Australian girl who is this famous artist. She does abstract paintings. Well, let me tell you something. That little girl is having so much fun just putting ladles inside of paint and scooping it up and just throwing it at canvas. And she's like a huge sensation at the age of nine. I believe her name is Alita something. I was just really, really impressed. You don't want too much of the green showing through in the end. You just want to try to get it on the outer banks of your river. And, um have it pop through here and there in the painting. So next I'm going to go in with one of the primary elements, the majestic blue. Now I'm gonna go right on top of the, the turquoise with that. Or 
or maybe that. Right. Nice one right there. Okay. Then I'm going to go over to my purple. I changed my mind, by the way. I got rid of the Blick Purple Matter and decided on Deep Violet instead. I that color had a little bit of a brown tinge to it, and I didn't want to have any brown in this, so. Maybe it's technically it wasn't brown, but it just looked brown to me. So. With this one, I'm going to go in between these colors. All right, and then I have two left. I have the gold, which I'm going to put down last, and then I have the Irish Mist primary elements. So let's do the Irish Mist first. And that one I'm gonna kinda just drizzle through also. And lastly, the gold, bright gold. Oh, that looks like a big uh, palm, palm it. Big pile of vomit. <laughs> I admit it. It does. All right. So now what I need to do is move my colors around. Okay. So I'm going to remove all cups because I'm tired of spot cleaning my rug when I blow them right off the table. And I'm going to put my dryer on low while using the cool button, which speeds it up a little bit. So I'm going to start from here, blow out that way, and then here and go that way. And I did it again. Put my brush, my blower right in the paint. I did that yesterday too. And I did it again, just as I did yesterday. I forgot to put white in. So let's see if we can't save this now. <laughs> Ideal smell. Tell you, just a little bit of white goes a long way in helping the design, you know. All 
All right. Let's try this again. I'm going to go this way. to stop right there I'm liking that and getting some big crazy looking cells already all in here I'm gonna just torch it quick and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my white and my syringe I'm going to start up at the top here, if I don't kill myself first. And I'm lightly going to just go along the edge and then in some areas push it down a little bit. Now this is where I have to be careful with my table because I don't want it to come flying up this way, the paint. Okay. I just need to get something under here. Hold on. See, usually I pour in my bucket and this isn't an issue, but for this technique, I need it to be flat on a flat surface. So put it sideways, the syringe, and kind of push. Just keep an eye on your paint. Make sure it's not going places that it shouldn't be going. And I'm going to take the rest of this and just squirt it along here. Ooh, lots of air bubbles there. Again, I'm watching it. Babysitting it. All right, now down here, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just shaping the edge of my river area with the white paint in the syringe. Now people do this all the time. It's called the injection method. Okay, now I'm going to take this, I'm going to pause you guys, I'm going to move over to where my bucket is, because all I have to do is add in the white paint, so we might as well do it on a flat surface, and I have to pop those bubbles. Okay, so, now I'm going to add my white to the ends. And get rid of these big old bubbles here. I'm sorry about the 
shade that's going on. Shadows, I mean. I'm in a really bad spot here. Oh, what is that in my paint? There's something in there. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe it was just a bubble. So we're losing this one. It's going over the edge on me. there that is closing in on its own this one just does not want to stay I think for a small canvas like this it just too much paint but either way it's still pretty Okay, hmm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you. And let me see if I use my syringe right here, if I could push this back a little bit. There's really no good way for me to do this where you can see it. That's a little better, and then I could take these and push them outwards to kind of make it match. So I could come from this way and kind of shoop over here too. here why not All right, and then we'll do it here also. There. Okay, guys. That's it. I'll give you a close up. We shall call it finished. So I have most of the products listed below. Silicone, the GAC 800, all that. You're going to see some cells popping out now. You see I'm developing now that I'm adding heat. If 
that just made it a whole different painting adding that heat look how beautiful that is so anyway make sure you look at the description below I have a major announcement color art who sells the primary elements the resin art colors the new bling it galaxy diamond line uh, is having a huge contest grand prize is a $500 gift card so I'm going to link that below so you guys could check out the details you are going to need to have these flakes to compete and some color art products I have a coupon down below 25% off your entire purchase no minimum order uh, there's not a, a you know, $100 to get it off. It's just 25% off. So make sure you check it out. This is freaking beautiful. Look at these cells opening up in front of your eyes. Wow. I cannot wait to show you this. Look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to make sure I fix those edges really quick and get this sucker leveled very very well okay so i don't want to turn this into two videos please check out the description box below for all the info you need and as always my friends happy pouring